The most obvious thing about this game is that the graphics are terrible, but I still think you should try it out. Hear me out, the mark of any good VR experience is that you feel like it was actually worth your time, and this game absolutely nails that feeling for me. There's a lot to this game, from its lackluster graphics to its AAA quality voice acting and everything in between. We'll talk about all of it, but on a scale of 1 to 10, how important are graphics to you when it comes to gaming? Leave a comment below and get comfortable because we're starting on a controversy. Virtual reality graphics can be a tricky thing to explain because on screen, the graphics usually look better than they do inside the headset. That applies here too. The low resolution visuals are more noticeable when you're actually in the game, so it's understandable why almost every negative review is crapping on the graphics. I was actually pretty surprised to see that even the hacking puzzles textures were just as fuzzy as the rest of the environment. Normally you'd expect screens or projections in VR to be a bit sharper or glowy, but that's not the case here. It's all equally low resolution, but it's surprisingly easy to look past. Despite all these problems, this game manages to pull you in and keep you hooked. Generally speaking, this game is so immersive that the low quality graphics almost become irrelevant. Which is a good thing because uh, don't expect to tweak any settings to make things better here. There are almost no graphical options for this game, so what you see is literally what you get. The graphics in Journey to Foundation aren't winning any awards, but they don't ruin the experience either. It's kind of a testament to how immersive a game can be, even when it doesn't look that great. The good news here is that there's a lot more to this game than just the visuals, so it only goes up from here. If you love games with solid immersive plots, then you found the right game. This one throws you into a universe where a space empire is the ruling power. You're not just any soldier or citizen though, you play as a member of the Commission of Public Safety. As boring as that sounds, this shadowy organization seems under the rule of the Empire, but it supposedly wields more authority than the Emperor himself. That said, your mission is relatively simple and straightforward. Investigate the disappearance of a noblewoman's missing daughter on a planet in the far-flung corner of the galaxy. But one thing that stands out in Journey to Foundation is how solid and fleshed out the story feels. The characters you meet along the way don't just feel like filler characters. They have lives, troubles, and motives that make them feel real because this is a game where your choices actually matter. Your decisions can change the course of the story, which really elevates the atmosphere here. This game could have easily been just another bad space shooter, but again, you have choices. This means things that normally feel insignificant, like a frustrated NPC doing NPC things, are harder to ignore because you have consequences. Consequences that are easier to cope with when you can literally read the emotions of others, but that's related to the mechanics, so let's get into that. First off, the mind reading mechanic is a standout feature. It's not just a gimmick, it's actually well implemented in this game. With the press of your left joystick, you can figure out exactly what emotion someone is feeling. And as you could imagine, this would make it harder for people to lie to you by extension. And you can immersively fine tune the wavelength of your connection to them if you get vague readings. You can even use this power to attack the mind directly, which is kind of weird because you don't learn about this power until you're a good way into the game, even though you had it all along. Still, it's cool and different, just like the fact that you're not just a floating pair of hands in this game. This time around, you're a floating pair of arms with hands attached to them, and that explanation sounds weird, but it's actually pretty accurate. There is an issue with hand calibration in this game. Your actual hands end up being at the level of your character's wrists, which can be a bit disorienting. This doesn't make the game unplayable though, but it's noticeable and something that could definitely use some fine tuning. As a side note, this problem also affects shooting since in reality you have to aim much lower than the game is calibrated for. It's a good thing that this game's combat isn't super difficult because the enemies have insane accuracy. Anytime you poke your head out, you can bet they'll land a hit on you. Luckily, they don't do too much damage, but if you're not paying attention to your health, they can definitely kill you. But let's switch gears and talk about one of the many cool aspects of this game, the interactions. Everything you interact with feels genuine. Your fingers never become a mouse pointer and your trigger never becomes a simple left click. Everything you do is intuitive because it's designed in a way that uses common sense. This level of interaction is exactly what every VR game should aim for. When you see a control, there's no aiming at it and pulling the trigger. You physically have to push the buttons, turn the dials, and open the doors every single time. 
As far as seamless VR interactions go, this one is easily one of the best overall experiences you can have. And speaking of best experiences, for an indie game, the voice acting here is absolutely amazing. No exaggeration, the voice acting here is just a smidge below the level of Half-Life Alex, and for an indie game, that might as well be S tier. Enough with the trivia. Hey, you asked. Now, I'd love to help you out, but I'm a bit stuck. Fix that, and I can hack this baby no problem. These characters come to life through their voices, so much so that you almost feel like you're actually there with them. I wish I could say the same for the sound effects, and while most of them are average, they can be a bit too loud or quiet sometimes. Personally, I found myself disappointed in the laser pistol sounds though. It doesn't sound bad, but for some reason I was expecting something with a little more character. It just didn't have that oomph I was expecting, but that's just my personal feelings. While we're talking about things making noises though, one thing this game noticeably lacks is background ambience. No matter where you go, you get different versions of the same humming background noises. To be fair, I didn't even notice this until I went back to watch my gameplay footage. It's not a deal breaker, but having a richer soundscape could have really sold me on this game's atmosphere. Again though, the dialogue is well voiced and scripted. And when he starts to get emotional, knock twice on this door and we'll move to the next stage. Press the button to start the interrogation. Combine that with the fact that there's a lot of talking in this game and you've got more good than evil going for you. I can't help but feel the audio experience could have been improved with better options though. Now, it's great that the options menu is presented in a pretty cool way. It's in the form of a cube. This is a neat design choice that adds to the futuristic vibe of the game, and like every other interaction, it's immersively implemented. The buttons here are interacted with the same way you'd interact with any button in reality, but this isn't flawless. The buttons are so close to each other sometimes that it's easy to click the wrong one by accident. It can be frustrating, especially when you're trying to make quick adjustments. But of course, you have the important motion sickness reduction options included like teleportation movement or vignettes for those of us whose stomachs might not be used to VR yet. Speaking of which, you have options to skip climbing and maneuvering sections, which is pretty cool for getting past a part you might have failed too many times or if you're just afraid of heights in general. This isn't an option you see much in VR, and it's a pleasant surprise here. What isn't a pleasant surprise is the lack of audio adjustments. You can turn things like effects and or music on or off, but there's no level adjustments here. This is really disappointing given how off the audio can feel. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's noticeable. And it's the same story with the graphical options. Aside from being able to adjust the gamma, you don't have any sliders to work with. While I do love the way this game lets you immersively select options, I don't love how limited they are. And with that said, if you're wondering how this game stacks up to other VR titles this year, I've got you covered. Graphics gets a 1 out of 6 because they're noticeably on the weak side, and you cannot change that. That might be intentional due to the art style, but I don't think it hit the way the developers had hoped it would. Theme gets a 6 out of 6 because this is a rock solid combination of theme and story. Space feels a lot like space, choices actually matter, and the story is interesting enough to keep you going even if you don't like the graphics. Mechanics gets a 4 out of 6 because while I love how immersive interactions are, the rare misfire and cutscene timings and uninspired combat take a little away from the experience. Audio gets a 5 out of 6 because while the voice acting is S tier, the lackluster sound effects can affect the atmosphere just a bit though. And Options gets a 2 out of 6. It has options to reduce motion sickness, but the lack of graphical and audio adjustment makes the option cube look like just a showcase for how immersive interactions are. That said, this game is actually pretty immersive and I feel like it was worth the 25 bucks I spent on it. If graphics really bother you, then you might want to watch some of my other reviews to get a feel for how this game stacks up to one you might have already played, but this game has earned an immersion score of 4.5 out of 6. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future VR content, and until next time, stay immersed.